let's say I give you uh, two compounds and I say to you, okay, can you first of all tell me whether it is an aldehyde or a ketone? So, is it an aldehyde or a ketone? Don't mind if it's one or the other, I would like to know. There's a very simple test you can do, and it involves adding something called 2,4-dinitrophenylhydrazine, which is a bit of a mouthful. You can call it 2,4-DNPH. If you add that to both aldehydes and ketones, you will see an orange precipitate. So that tells you straight away. So, if we do a little thing, how to identify, and we'll do this next lesson, identify ketones and aldehyde. So we're going to do a little um, table here. So, you start off with your unknown compound. The first thing I would do is I would add 2, 4, dinitrophenylhydrazine. If I get an orange precipitate, remember precipitate is key, you know you have got either a keto or you have got an aldehyde. If it doesn't, it's something else. Can you put out the full, the tube for DNP? Yeah. Do we need to know? Oh, it's also some of the sheets. Do you want to do it? Yeah. 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 If we were asked, it would be put tube for DNP. Yeah. Does anybody have a coloured pen? Sure. I do, but I'm using it. There you go. It's all in white. Right, so you see an orange precipitate, you know you've got either an aldehyde or a keto. Mm -hmm. How can you tell the difference between those two? Well, you add something called Tollens reagent. Tollens reagent is silver nitrate solution, which has been dissolved up in uh, ammonia. Um, so you've got water, ammonia, and silver nitrate. So to tell the difference, you would then add Tollens reagent, and you would have for the reaction, but you would see no reaction for a ketone. For the aldehyde, you would add Tollens, and you would see a silver mirror, which is a precipitate of silver. Now we'll do this next lesson. If you do it properly and you swirl it, you see this silver precipitated around the test tube and it's like a mirror effect. You can see your beautiful reflection in the test tube. Um, normally it just comes up as grey sludge, but never mind. Can you do one properly? Well, if I can do it properly, I'll try. Um, so it's very, very easy. So you've got your unknown compound, add two four dinitrophenyl hydrazine. If you see our orange precipitate is either an aldehyde or a ketone. If you then add tollens, an aldehyde will give you a silver mirror, a keto wooden. Now, let's say I said to you, okay, you've got your orange precipitate. You know it's an aldehyde. I want you to tell me exactly which one it is. What exactly, which exact ketone or aldehyde have I got? What you can do. So there's one thing, either I just want to know is it a ketone or an aldehyde, you just do this. If I try to say, tell me, name that ketone, which one is it? What you do is you take the orange precipitate and you recrystallize it. So recrystallize orange precipitate. You then measure its melting point. And then you look up in books of data. There's lots of books of data where very, very, well, sad people have measured lots of melting, melting points for these orange precipitates. And you would look up, look up, measure the melting point, and then look up value in data book. And that would tell you exactly which one you've got. Oh, is that something else? So this tells you the exact one you've got. Tells you exact. Keto not aldehyde. Exact name. 
Yeah. And then the other one just tells you the algorithm. Yeah. So if you look on page 77, you may say, well, what's the point? Why don't you just measure the original melting or boiling point of your unknown compound? Yeah. Well, it could be, but so could this. You're going to have a whole range. Why not? So if I said to you, if you look on page 27, I told you, you have got either heptan-2O or cyclohexanone. Mm -hmm. You've got your orange precipitate. You can say, well, why don't you just measure the boiling point of those two ketones? If you look at the boiling point, the Pretty boiling similar. point is 151 for hepton 2 and 156 for cyclohexanone. There's only five degrees in that. That's quite difficult to be able to tell the difference. If you look at the melting point of this orange precipitate, which is a 2,4 DMP derivative, one of them is 90 and the other one is 162. So we should be able to tell the difference of those quite easily. So what you do is you look at the melting point and go, oh, my melting point is 162. That means that I must have started with originally cyclohexanone. So you find a melting point of the derivative and then you work backwards and go, okay, originally it was cyclohexanone. If it was 90, originally it must have been hepton 2 It's because the orange specific gives you a really, really broad range of melting points for you to do. So let's think just quickly about why this works. What's actually happening? Well, I'm adding silver nitrate, which contains Ag plus ions, to this, and I am making silver. What's happening to my silver in terms of redox? Is it being oxidised or reduced? Reduced. It's being reduced. So, silver's being reduced. Why does silver get reduced by an aldehyde and not a ketone? So it's got more oxygen. What can happen to an aldehyde? We were looking at earlier in the lesson. Aldehydes acid. can be oxidized. oxidized. So aldehydes can be oxidized to a carboxylic acid, and the aldehyde is oxidized and silver gets reduced. reduced. So the overall equation for this one. If we do it for ethanol, say, so the equation for pollen, you start off, let's start off with ethanol. You add in silver plus ions. You've also got some water there. That will make the aldehyde going to be oxidised to a carboxylic acid, which is going to be ethanolic acid. The Ag plus becomes Ag, silver metal, and to get it to balance, you also need uh, some couple of Ag plus as well. So this is for an You aldehyde. also need two yeah. silver pluses and two AGs as well. Do we need to know Not quite yet. We're going to come and do that later on in the course. You can simplify this if they let you. How do we, this is our oxidising agent. How do we represent an oxidising agent in organic chemistry? Uh, Squared bucket. So, so you can simplify this to CH3CHO plus square bracket O goes to CH3COOH. So that's so, water? Um, no, water gets made when I go from an alcohol to an aldehyde, not this way. So remember this works. So they may ask you, why do aldehydes react with Collins reagent and ketones don't? It's because aldehydes can be oxidised to carboxylic acids, whereas ketones can't, which we've looked at before. So here my aldehyde goes to a carboxylic acid, the ketones won't.